about you, but when I sometimes when I listen to this song, I think about how uh, back in 1992, I think about when all of us have had our body vices, so don't judge me when I share mine. Amen. But I, I think about when I had a buddy that he sold drugs, and we were best friends, and I didn't sell drugs, but I to entertain us. So that service and we were prepared to go out one night and before we went out, he had to get his stuff in line so that he could get it all together so he could go and drop it off and make the money the way that he made the money. And as we were sitting in that in there waiting, I was waiting on him and uh and they're playing a video game waiting for him to get his stuff all together so he could drop it off and and, and sometimes we find ourselves in places we don't know how close we are to disaster. And the next morning, uh, we went on out that night and, and did what we did. But the next morning, I received a call from my mom. And my mom told me, she said, Ron, I just received a call from an investigator with the Andrew Police Department. And they had a raid set up last night. They had worked for months to, to raise your friend. The bus man. And when they were about to raid, the lead detective noticed your truck in front of the house and he called it off. And he called me and he told me to warn you to, to watch my life and get my life right. Well, that, that did a lot for me and it scared me. I, I'm not built for prison, it scared me. And, but my friend, he, he kept doing it. I warned him and he kept doing it. And they ended up getting him out a month later. And he ended up spending 12 years in prison. And when I think about it, you know, that could have easily been me because I knew what was going on in the house. I was no innocent victim. Man. But God's grace, and and God's mercy yeah. uh -huh. spared me, not because I, I was right, Amen. but just God's grace and His mercy. I go for me. And every one of you, we have a testimony. But we didn't suffer, but that's why we can't judge anybody. Uh -huh. You just didn't get caught. You just didn't uh -huh. suffer for some of the things that you had to go through. But, but I love God. Amen. And again, we're going to minister this song. The great is your mercy. Come on, let's worship God. Let's worship God.
thee. I will rise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. If we would choose for the subject on today, the subject would be very simple. Lessons learned from the hall pen. Lessons learned from the hall pen. Anybody, anybody ever found yourself in a hall pen before? Ever found yourself in a pit that was so dark, valley that was so dark that you didn't know you were able to find your way out of it? You got so deep in this hall pen to where you begin to feel down on yourself. Low self-esteem begin to fall upon your shoulders and the weight of the world seem to be beating you down. But my brothers and sisters, I've been serving God long enough to know that if God said that he would be with me through the thick and through the thin, my faith has become stronger because I understand that fear and faith can't stand together. So if I say I got faith, that means fear has to be what? Eliminated. So my brothers and sisters, in every season in our lives, whether God, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, there should be a lesson taken from every experience or whatever experience that we face in our lives. I'm talking to somebody in this room in St. Paul this morning. As we journey through this life, there will be some bad choices or decisions we have or will make in our lives. But the truth be told, on this morning, whether we are saved or not, there are some decisions that we have made, either it been 20 years ago, whether it been 30 years ago, whether it have been 40 years ago, or maybe even two days ago, or maybe even on yesterday. Yesterday or this morning when we got out of our bed, we made some bad choices in our lives that you wish you could turn back the hands of time and fix whatever the deliver was at that very moment. But unfortunately, that time has passed and my brothers and sisters, we must learn from it and move forward. Knowing that we don't make it, that we won't make that mistake again, over and over again. But some women have made some bad choices in the mix that they have chosen. But now we find yourself in a position to say never again, because I should have been specific in what I asked for, because I wanted a tall, dark, handsome black brother that made almost 70, 80 thousand a year. But we didn't understand the skeletons that was in his closet. All right, all right. And when we chose that tall, dark, handsome young man, he wasn't the man that we wanted him to be. But watch this. The same God that took you through that situation, he's able to bring you out of it. Is there anybody in this house that can give God crazy praise? That you know that you made some bad mistakes and some bad choices in your life, but God brought you through it, and if God was able to bring you through. But in every situation, we should learn from them and make better decisions. In our everyday lives, to become better stewards of this life God has given us. Some of the dilemmas we find ourselves in is not God's fault or the devil's fault. We made a choice to do what we wanted and how we wanted to do it. We planted that seed, and my brother and sister, whatever seed that you plant, you got to reap it. Then somebody said, be careful what seed you plant. Because you got to reap that seed. But it's the person or soul we become when we go through these obstacles we face because we should be stronger, wiser, and better from our decisions. This text, my brothers and sisters, is telling to teach us, to show us on this morning three aspects of our lives. Number one, these are two brothers. 
said he had two brothers. Brother. Y'all forgot about the other brother, but the, the older brother who was jealous of the younger brother when the younger brother came back home. All right. Uh -huh. My brother and sister, the, the, the older brother was upset because he realized that I stayed with you, Daddy. Uh -huh. I didn't leave you like he left you. Uh -huh. I saved with you, I did what you asked me to do, I worked the fields like you wanted me to work them, and you go have a party for him. Uh, uh, well, some of us are like that in church. We go out and witness, and the pastor sends out a witness team, uh, and we go out and witness and bring those that are lost uh, back to the church, and we mad because they sit in our favorite seat. <laughs> I ain't got no witness for you. You know, I got about five over here. You gotta understand, I know I'm in AME church, but I understand that all of us are just alike. And some folk get angry because I've been in church serving 30 and 40 years, and you don't come and take my position. You don't come and take my title. You don't come and take my spot. This is my spot. I've been holding this spot now, so now we come to church and we come to worship with the instead of an attitude to give God glory. Because the Bible says that heaven rejoices when one comes to Christ. And my brother said, it don't matter how long you've been outdoors. It don't matter what you pipe you spoke on last night. It don't matter what homework you slept with last night. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But just like the brother was saying earlier, it was the grace of God. Yes, somebody to shout God's grace because I know that I should have been dead. I should have been in a crazy house. I should have lost my mind. But because of the grace. Yes, somebody to shout grace one time. We got to understand the difference between grace and mercy. Yeah, mercy is what keeps us while we in the storm. But grace keeps us from some things. Let me say it one more time. Let me say it about five months ago here in the corner. Grace keep you from some stuff. You, 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 you know, you was messing with that no good Negro, and God kept you in perfect peace. You know, you was messing with that no good girl that you know you had no business sleeping with. But God kept you from getting HIV, kept you from getting in the system. I need about five real folk that can just wave your hand. Says you people, you can just wave your hand and say, God, I thank you for keeping me, for holding me for you. There's two brothers. This brother is staying home. He stayed home. Here's a father that's calling to me. Two brothers. Now y'all know about them sibling rivalries. You know? I got a brother that's 15, old, 15 years older than me. We grew up in different atmospheres, but mom and daddy didn't treat us no different. But watch this. There's sibling rivalries, and what happened was he got mad at his brother because he got mad at his daddy because he says, Daddy, you celebrate him when I stay home. Watch this. The other brother mm -hmm. okay. got tired of being home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He got tired of being under his daddy's roof. Uh -huh. He got tired of following daddy's rules. Uh -huh. Anybody ever been there? Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, some of us right now, we, yeah. we teenagers right now, well, I can't wait to get out of mama's house. Uh -huh. I can't wait to get out of daddy's house. Uh -huh. They get on my nerves. I see Keaton smiling. They get on my nerves. I want to get out and do my own thing. So some of us wish now. Can I find some of those that wish we never made that decision? Wish we were still in mom and dad's house because some of the bills that we got to pay, the light bill, the water bill, the, the, the condo, the house bill. Some of us wish we went back home now. Amen. I want to live my life like it's golden. I, I want to live my life like Jill Scott said, like it's golden. I want to live my life 
the way I want to live it. I want to go. I want to come in the way I want to come in. I, I don't want to have a curfew. I, I don't want to do what Daddy say to. So Daddy, give me, give me my hand of what you owe me. You gotta understand this culture. In this culture, the oldest son was the recipient. He was a recipient. If daddy died, he was the first one that was supposed to get the earnings. But the younger brother is bold enough that he steps up and he says, you know what, daddy? I'm tired of him. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of these servants. Give me what I want right now. But watch this. Look at the father. Look at the father. Look at the father. Look at the father. He, 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 he looks at his son. Didn't get angry with him. Uh -huh. Didn't go toe to toe with him. Uh -huh. all right, all right. But he gave him what he owed him. What he, owed him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. he gave him what he asked for. Uh -huh. And y'all don't miss this today. All right. What God does, you know, when we pray to God and we say, God, I need this. Uh -huh. God, I need that. And God, I want this. What God does, he doesn't argue with us. He sends us a warning. But after he sends us that warning, he sometimes just automatically gives us. All right. All right. But we won't, even though he understands and he knows that we're not mature enough to handle it, God still gives it to us. Yeah. Oh, y'all, don't miss this today. The Bible says, act, and it shall be given. Knock on the door and the door shall be open. Seek and ye shall find. So what God does, he honors our request. And watch this, he gives us what we ask for even though he know we're not spiritually mature to have it. Y'all want to say today. Some of us are asking God for us. We want, we want millions of dollars. We want a pocket full of money. And we can't even be stewards over the little money that we got. Now. Some of us are living paycheck to paycheck because of the decisions that we made. God says He wants us to be what? The head and not the tail. He wants us to be above and not what? Believe. He wants us to be the what? Lender and not the borrower. So the Bible, I took that when you were going through your trials and tribulations. Sometimes pastors and preachers, we preach some things that really don't believe in. But what I've discovered is that now faith is a substance. Yes, Been to the point in your life 
to where you thought you were getting away from God. All right, all right, man. Okay, let me help you out. There was some times, I ain't gonna talk about myself, Pastor. I can't see myself. There was some times when I got away from mom and daddy. Because when I got away from mom and daddy, watch this, when I got away from my son, away from them, thinking I was getting away. Anybody ever been there before? And by the time you got home, mom and daddy was waiting on you. I want to go, I want to go, we got to get back to that point. Because it still takes a village to raise a child, right? So you know, if I, I was scared to cuss. I was scared, you know what? I did, Pastor, I'm, I'm going to tell my testimony. I had, the, I had the crazy nerve to steal my daddy's car. I wanted to go joyride since Haywood. I wanted to go joyride in my daddy's car, and I'm speeding through the neighborhood. Just riding through it, and just... Just full of money, just put all the way down with yeah. the gas. And I'm racing it. All of a sudden, the guy hit me in the back. Oh, oh. Didn't damage the car. Oh, oh y'all missed that. Right. Right. It could have been tragic, but watch this. God delivered me from it, and he delivered me from that foot. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. My dad said, I'm putting him out. I ain't gonna have nothing else to do with it. But watch this song. I said, thank God for mama. Thank God for mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I put him out. I ain't know. But watch this. His father never took his eyes uh, right. off of his son. Right. But watch this. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. Watch, this. watch what happens. He gets out to the far country. Uh -huh. Knowing that he was immature, he couldn't handle what, what his dad had gave him. All right. So he spends everything that he had. Uh -huh. Anybody ever had friends that as long as you had something? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They, they at your hip. They riding in your car. Uh -huh. They flowing with you. Come here, Mark. Come here real quick. They, they flowing with you. Uh -huh. They your homeboys to the end. Y'all yeah. uh -huh. just flowing. You got all this money, and we going to the bar, we hanging out, uh -huh. we homeboys, y'all see the pictures? Uh -huh. We homeboys, watch this, soon as a little money get a little slow. Uh -huh. <laughs> y'all even hit me, I got to share it with y'all. Yeah. 
it's some folk that's close to you. You ever know some, some, some folks is wrong and get close to you, get connected to you, and next thing you know, they are, they are they're stabbing you in the back. The old days had it, they said the best, fat stabbing. Sounds like a little bit that this is how they say the old days, fat stabbing. My sis, he finds himself in the hall of fame. His dad has high servants, uh -huh. but he finds himself. Uh -huh. So Scars will in the hall pit. Yeah. So Ross, he finds himself in uh -huh. the hall pit. Uh -huh. Somebody shot hall pit. Uh -huh. He finds himself in the hall pit, and now he's to the point of depression. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. His self esteem has got him down because he, his pride has stepped in. And now he's too prideful to go back to his father, so he finds himself, now I gotta get a job. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And only job he can have, because what you gotta understand is his daddy is taking care of his education, his daddy is taking care of everything, and now he's so spiritually immature that he doesn't understand that now I can't go back to daddy's house. Uh -huh. So now I gotta find me a job. Uh -huh. So what he does, he goes to the hall pit, somebody uh -huh. hall pit. Uh -huh. And as he's working, he's so hungry. You ever been to a point where your stomach is touching your back? <laughs> Anybody that's my family know I eat. Oh, I love to eat. And that's this side. My stomach is touching my back, so I won't be before y'all long right now. <laughs> but watch this. You ever got to a point where you were so hungry? You know, anybody been a particular you don't just eat everything. Wow. Come on, y'all. Y'all be real. Some folk invite y'all in the house. No, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm busy. I'm busy, all right. I'm all right. Watch this. He gets to the point in his moment of depression. And he gets down on his knees. He gets down on his knees to the point of submission. Uh -huh. Y'all don't miss that today. That's how God wants us to be because watch this. Humble is the only way. Yeah. Amen. And sometimes God got to get you to your knees. Uh -huh. And get you in his face uh -huh. to the point I'm at his feet and I'm saying, God, I can't make it without you. I can't move without you. I can't breathe without you. I can't live without you. God, I need you. Anybody ever been to that point in your life to where you got to your knees and you know I tried everything, I tried alcohol, it won't work for me. Because once I come off that, I'm still going through the same stuff. You ever tried alcohol, marijuana, and try to get your way out of it? But let me help you out today. The only one that can help you is the name of Jesus. So he does. He has an alarming epiphany. Right. Somebody said alarming epiphany. Right. He has an alarming epiphany because while he's in the hall pit, uh -huh. he says, why am I in this hall pit? All right. When my dad yep. back home has hired servants. All right. why, why am I in this hall pit? Uh -huh. When my daddy Owns cows of a thousand years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Why am I in this depressed state in my life? Uh -huh. When I can just go back home. Uh -huh. Touch what I say, just go back home. Just go back home. my brothers and sisters, God can't do nothing for us. He can't do it for us. We gotta just get up uh -huh. out of our depression. Get up yeah. out of our state of depression. Get up. Whatever you're going through, get up from there and move forward. Yes. Tell somebody to say move forward. I may have just testified about five or six people just say move forward, move, move forward, move, move forward. Don't stay where you are. Move forward. Don't stay stuck where you are. Move forward because the God that I serve is able. Yeah. Uh -huh. Watch this. I can't say where I am, but I got to give up. Yes, 
can't beat myself down anymore. I got to get up. I can't tear myself up anymore. I can't tear myself down anymore. I got to get up. And sometimes I'm going to sisters that I, don't, I can't depend on nobody else to encourage me. I got to sometimes encourage myself. Pat my own self on the back and say, you know what? You are more than a copy. You can do all things through Christ that's strength. You can be better. You can do what you can do. You just got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? Regardless of what the enemy may say. I can make it through. Yes, Come on, sis. We hear that longing. Epiphany. Uh -huh. He gets himself up. Uh -huh. Brushes himself off. All right, all right. Gets out of that depressed set. Uh -huh. Starts rehearsing. Uh -huh. What he's going to say to his daddy. He's going to be able to say to his daddy, I've sinned. I've right. fallen short. And uh -huh. I'm saying, he started confessing. And the Bible says, if we confess with our mind, the Lord Jesus, God will take care of you. Watch well, this. He started confessing on his way to his daddy's house. And as he was confessing, he's on his way to his daddy's house. His daddy sees him from afar off because he ascended from his despair. He moved forward and as he was on his way to his daddy's house. Watch this. He didn't have to go to where his daddy was. Uh -huh. His daddy came to where he was. Uh -huh. My brothers and sisters, I, I, I discovered that God will get in the trouble with you sometimes. He won't just pull you out of it, but he'll get in it with you. Uh -huh. And watch this. He'll meet you at the point of your need. Uh -huh. hear me. Yeah. Because the Bible says that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches uh -huh. and glory. So watch this. Uh -huh. He made it so. Uh -huh. right now. He began to rehearse uh -huh. his speech. Uh -huh. Stan said, You all right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Go get the fattest cake. Uh -huh. Go get a ring and put it on. Y'all should be shot right now. Go, go put a ring on his finger. Go get the robe because watch what happens. You got to understand at this point in his life, the boy is dirty. He's been in a hog pit. And some of you, when you came to Christ, you were just came from a hog pit. Some of us just got our hog pit this morning. And we said we could just make it to the sanctuary. If I could just make it to the altar, everything would be all right. And I don't need nobody hating on me. I don't need nobody talking about me. And I need some folk worshiping with me. I need some folk praising with me. So the man says, we're going to have a party. Somebody shout party. See, I know we ain't in the club no more, but we came to the house of worship. And sometimes I just love to have a party in the house of God. And so when they heard that the boy was in town, there was no haters. The only hater in the house was the boy outside. And so when the son came back home, watch what happened. Now, what God will do for you in your life. Listen to me. Listen to me. What God will do for you in your life, even though you're dirty. Even though you got sin and sense on you, watch this. God will cover you up uh -huh. Uh -huh. before you get to the point y'all ain't here. Uh -huh. I dare you to look at somebody next to you and say, neighbor. I dare you to look at you get excited. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know what you went through this week. I don't know what hell you went through this week. But talk somebody next to you and say, neighbor.
just worship God in this place. Thank you, God. Glory, hallelujah. He didn't say that God would not allow us to, to take the path we choose. We may choose something that's not that best for us at that time. Man. And the God that we serve might go ahead and give it to us. And even if we find ourselves in a whole pit, the God that we serve, if we're just willing to get up, we don't even have to clean up. If we're just willing to get up and come to ourselves, remember, remember where, 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 where we were when we lost our way. We can just get up and turn towards going back towards the Father. Preacher said that the Father didn't wait for him to sit on the throne, sit there and wait for him to get there. But he said he ran out to him and said, oh, go clean him up! See, church, that's what we 